Fishing like a local isn't just about catching fish. It's about connecting with the environment and the people who call it home. It's about hearing the stories and traditions that have been passed down for generations and sharing unforgettable moments with the people you meet along the way. Fishing like a local is having an experience that stays with you forever. And with Fishing Booker, you can experience it too, no matter where you are. Discover your next adventure on Fishing Booker. This upcoming concert season will be all about the boots, and Tecovis is your stop for the best in Western style. Tecovis has seasonal and limited edition offerings this spring and summer, including men's and women's boots, apparel, hats, bags, and more. All Tecovis boots are made by hand in a time-honored tradition with timeless styles that are always on trend. And Tecovis has first wear comfort with little to no break-in period. It's hard to find this level of comfort paired with this level of style. Stop by your local Tecova store, have a complimentary drink or two, that's WCB style, and shop new styles. The smell of fresh leather and friendly staff are at your service. Many stores even have leather custom branding to make your boots truly personalized. And with regular live music and events, there's no in-store experience like it. If you can't make it into a store, just visit tecovas.com. That's T-E-C-O-V-A-S.com. They offer free shipping on all boots as well as free returns and exchanges and ship right to your door. Go to tecovas.com and find your new favorite pair of boots today. emergency broadcast system announcing the commencement of the annual purge sanctioned by the U.S. government. Weapons of class 4 and lower have been authorized for use during the purge. All other weapons are restricted. Government officials of ranking 10 have been granted immunity from the purge and shall not be harmed. Commencing at the siren, any and all crime, including murder, will be legal for 12 continuous hours. Police, fire, and emergency medical services will be unavailable until tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. when the purge concludes. Blessed be our new founding fathers and America, a nation reborn. May God be with you all. Well, all right. Welcome back to the Survival and Basic Badass Podcast. Kevin and Chuck, are you ready to release the beast? Well, it's time to be because we're going to talk about The Purge. Now, for those of you who don't know, I can't imagine how you wouldn't know, but there is a movie called The Purge. And basically the premise is, um, well, I, I guess the the under uh, undercurrent or the, the theme is that the population has gotten so big and Basically, the government spends so much money taking care of people who don't take care of themselves. They call them the poor in this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not, you know, the, the yeah, we'll, we'll get into that in another episode. But anyway, basically, they figure, well, you know what? We can't really afford the poor. And people have a lot of anger and, and you know, hatred and anxiety if we can make violence and crime legal for one day everybody will get rid of that hatred and even better if we make murder legal they can go kill off all the poor people and then they won't be a tax on the system and the government will have money to do whatever they need to do to you know go out fancy dinners and get hookers and you know normal government stuff hookers and blow you know, business right so well basically after, uh, you know, they set this up, they set up one day a year, I guess it's March 21st at seven at night. They, uh, you know, have that announcement you heard in the beginning of the episode and, uh, they let everybody, uh, kind of run loose. Now it kind of got me thinking about the world, you know, when you talk about SHTF and whatever, there's a lot of crazies and there's a lot of crazy people in this world. And, Really, if there's no law, that's what 
uh, shit hits the fan kind of scenario is, you know, when there's just lawlessness and people do what they want. And whether you're in the city and you have like roving gangs or maybe you're out in the country and you have that one psycho who's, you know what, brutal and thinks he can come around or maybe you live out in the country, but the prison that's 15 miles away, well, maybe those people got let out and you need to find a way to protect your home. Now there is a third scenario. And I don't know if you guys know about these red flag laws or these other guys who wear these baseball hats that say ATF on them. And they just like to kick in your door for no reason. Mm. We're going to kind of cover a broad spectrum of how to protect yourself and your home from any of these types of uh, home invasions, if you will. Mm -hmm. Unwanted guests, and I would say uninvited guests. Uninvited guests. And like, like when you're having Christmas dinner and your drunk uncle shows up. This is the episode for you. Right. All right. Now, I also have to point out it is the Christmas season. And you might be actually listening to this on Christmas Eve, day before Christmas Eve, mm -hmm. somewhere around. All those there. expensive presents sitting under the door, under the tree. And you need to protect those presents. You sit down with the uh, wife and the kids, and you grab your glass of Southern Comfort or possibly Jameson, you know. And you're sitting there. That was a little dig at Kevin because <laughs> he's missing out tonight. Uh -huh. um, and. Uh, you're all sitting there together and you watch Home Alone. Mm -hmm. You're like that rascally Kevin. Look at the right. fun stuff that he does. Kevin McAllister, you're such a nut. Such a nut, right? Mm -hmm. So he gets a little weird as he gets older. But, you know, back then he was a cute little kid. You know, he, he put was. his hands on his cheeks and uh -huh. you know, oh, it's just the, the cutest thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So anyway, now that we've covered Home Alone and the Purge movies from beginning to end, um, the, uh, you know, that that's what that whole uh, release the beast is. You know, it's supposed to be getting rid of the, uh, the tension of uh, day to day life in a, a corrupt world. So mm -hmm. what are some of the things? Well, first of all, in, in a violent world, let, let's say first it's kind of a, a one day scenario, kind of like the purge. Where would be a good place you could uh, hide or take shelter? Or what would you do? Or would you be out? Would you be the guy on, with a sniper, sniper rifle up on a rooftop? I think, I think the first thing I would do in that sort of situation is start working on underground uh, escape hatches out of my basement. That, that was well, – I like that. Now, uh, one of the things that, that really came to mind was, well, you need to find a place to hide that's out of the way – and not to be noticed. Right. I mean, that's the big thing is you don't want to be noticed. And man, underground bunker really came to mind in the prepper world, you know? Because mm -hmm. right. at first I was like, well, gee, I'd, you know, dig a hole in the woods and, and throw a board over it and have some leaves on top and you just sleep it out. I can wait a day. Mm -hmm. You know, Saddam did it in the freaking desert for, right. you know, who knows how long. Yeah. How many times did people walk right past him not knowing he was right there? How did it, we don't even know because when you're in the desert, you don't even know where you're walking. Because uh -huh. it, it's all, was I over there? Was I over here? <laughs> I, I don't know what's All the happening. same. Right. So I was like, well, that's a good idea. And then I was like, well, hell, we're preppers, right? Underground bunker, you know? Uh -huh. You could step that up. So maybe trap doors in and out of your house and secret compartments. Not a bad plan. Um, what else for like a one day? Like what if you're in the city? What do you do? Well, the first thing is you need to understand that um, walls don't stop bullets. You know, Not if, you, rock walls. if you don't have brick walls or cement walls, you know, there's, you know, you can basically a lot of these walls, you could get through with an X-Acto knife in a, in a, you know, in a, yeah. <clears throat> say an apartment building. Yeah. You get inside, you can cut right through those walls. Going through the door is, is, you know. Maybe it's easy, maybe not. It depends on what kind of deadbolts, what kind of chains they have on there, what type of door it is. Yeah. But drywall. No, that's it. People lock the door and they're they're putting a table in front of the door and you just kick through the sheetrock three feet over and right. you walk right in, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's definitely a possibility. So um, what I'd say, first thing, 
is to shut off all the lights and electricity to the house that, you know, even like hit the that. breaker if you're not, you know, if you're ready for it for a day, turn it off. And you know what I, a lot of people, uh, I, myself included, shutters, man, they're just trash. You can have, replace your shutters with actual working shutters. What? That's that a maybe, thing? Maybe would have some, uh, you know, some, some, uh. Ballistic ability? Right, some sort of bullet stopping capability on them. All right, I was now, thinking about doing some uh, replacing all my my shutters. Now, if they're uh, going to be I, like AR five hundred steel or something, you might need some substantial hinges to uh, support that. That's but, you right. know the older back in the day, you know, in the colonial times, they used to have the big iron hinges, you know, with the uh-huh. hook, and they'd set it up there. Yeah. Um, I actually read one one of the prepper books that I had had read a uh, fiction novel. The guy talks about doing it and he actually kind of breaks down what it would weigh if you had like AR 500 uh, shutters. And I know you're not talking about that substantial, but uh, that guy does it and freaking, you know, they're at, they have to lift it up with the freaking uh, tractor, you know, <laughs> really. And I'm like, Oh, cause he, he does the math, you know, and he's like, mm-hmm. yeah, they're a little substantial, but you know, that or he was a girly man, you know, it could go either way. Right. Right. Now, I do have to point out before I get too far into this episode, uh, we had a listener, Ashley, who uh, sent us an email. And uh, she said that maybe me and Kevin don't talk about the more the ugly side of prepping. Mm -hmm. She said it's not all campfires and uh, roasted marshmallows. Right. And she was a little worried about our camping episode that it's possible that, you know, we're not preparing you guys for the, uh, the brutal world. So hopefully Ashley, you appreciate this episode and uh, this is maybe more to your liking. And I think we have a few more coming up in the near future that might, uh, m- might be in the direction that you're looking for. So you just keep listening, hang in there with us and uh, we'll get you through it. So where, uh, where else in the city, where were you saying, where would you hide? Well, I think, uh, I think, you know, one of the simplest things is, I mean, first off, if you got one day a year, get the fuck out of the city. I you like know? it. If you're, if you know it's coming, get on the boat that's not there. Yeah. Cities are always by lakes or oceans or rivers. Right. Get on the boat. And that's why in these sorts of situations, the poor people always die because they can't afford a car and they can't afford to get out of the city. That, that seems right. So, I mean, step one. Get out of get out of where where people are, you know. You go out in the middle of the woods somewhere. Your odds are better. Yeah, right. your odds are better. Nobody's going to be out there. Yeah, no, it sounds right because they're in the city looking to kill people. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. So, what are some uh, things we could do? Now, I was thinking maybe get some training, maybe learn some skills. Right. Some right? tactical training. So maybe we uh, take that martial arts, that uh, grappling class, mm-hmm. that. MMA class that I, I'd stay away from karate. You get Boxing, the right ju- wrestling. Any you one get, of those. You get the right jujitsu guy in that class is worth it. You, you get the wrong guy and you're wasting your time and money. Mm-hmm. Um, wrestling, you know, 80% of the people you can take out if you know how to wrestle, you know? Right. Um, and then that kind of goes into the grappling and other things, you know, you can expand on it. Grappling and stuff. Usually when they term it that, it's a lot of the same moves, but it's more geared towards street fighting and and that, you know, hand-to-hand combat kind of thing. And actually do something. Um, You know, one of the things, learn how to run fast. You know, yeah. I was watching some videos on, on the purge and, and stuff before uh, this. And the guys, like, they, it, it was funny. It was like a uh, mock uh, thing and the guys are chasing this guy with the chainsaw and they got you know pig masks or something and they're like they're like oh you know about to kill the guy and then the horn sounds that it's morning Uh and they're like oh well i guess we can't kill you we'll go to denny's you know Uh they go to denny's and they're sitting there and they're like well what are you thinking what are you gonna do next year and he's like i think i'm gonna learn to run fast Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that sounds yeah. like a pretty good, good idea. freaking idea, especially if you're going to be in the city, you know. Mm-hmm. So that might be something, and just overall better health, better shape. Because when you're gassed or winded, 
you know, I've, I've been in fights and I've talked to other guys and you see some big muscular guys and they'll tell you, if you don't have the stamina that yeah. it, you're not going to last. You yeah, know, I learned that in boxing, you know, when I was boxing, it was like, you don't realize in two minutes, you could be exhausted. Yes. You know, if you're um, not, if you're not on your game, man, and you're not doing your cardio. Yes. That, that energy, that fuel tank runs out quick. I know that, you know, I, I, uh, I did some training uh, a while back. You guys heard me talk about it in Texas and we went out there and, and I was fighting on this guy and he was a lot bigger than me and, and we're going at it. And I kid you not by like, I don't know, four or five minutes in the punches I was throwing had nothing left to them. I mean, right. I don't even, it was just nothing. You're just like, ah, oh. mm-hmm. you know, I, I, dude, you're, I'm done. And it's not even like, I mean, I can run for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes mm-hmm. and be all right. But five minutes of throwing hard punches, yeah, it takes a lot out of you. You don't realize so if you put some time in and get some real training and focus on your health, it's going to make a big difference if you become a survivor or not. Um, and also agility, you know, I mean, just being in control of your body and moving and, you know, understanding things. Also, uh, so I guess kind of jumping around a tiny bit back to, you know, the house, right? So Kevin had mentioned, maybe we get some shutters and and make it a little bulletproof. The the big weak link I always kind of see with hiding and making your house a fortress and whatever is fire. Mm -hmm. And you always kind of run the risk that they're going to try and burn you out, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think like Kevin touched on in the beginning, having some kind of an escape route or some kind of, you know, tunnel system out or whatever. I know that doesn't sound realistic, but if you're building up your place and at least have a little door of something that maybe comes out in the bushes or something that you can. Right. I mean, uh, sneak away. He's talking about, uh, uh, about a root cellar. Yes. It's a good place to start, man. Be able to Um, access the root cellar from your basement. What, what is it? Uh, walking tall with the rock. Uh-huh. Do you remember? Uh, he, he had that trap door in the police station mm-hmm. and he yep. was able to go down and he's shooting everybody in the ankles or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, a trap door into the crawl space of your house. Yeah. Not a bad idea. And you know, that's a realistic, plausible thing you could do for not a lot of money and, you know, really make it discreet where you really have a way out, you know? Right. Right. A few minutes with it with a saza and you're all set. I mean, the wife might be pissed off. The wife There's might be a little pissed floor, off but... if you do it in a few minutes with the saza. Right. But let's say let's let's give that project about three hours. Mm-hmm. All right. But, all you right. know, you I know we could cut the hole in a few minutes. <laughs> we could chainsaw that bad boy right out. Um. So then uh, let's kind of move into uh, and well, like Kevin said, with the shutters. There's a big difference between cover and concealment in the mm-hmm. walls that you can shoot through and punch through. Right. Maybe if you put some stuff to barricade the walls a little bit, make them a little beefier, a little sturdier inside, or mm-hmm. at least a section of wall be bulletproof. Right. And, you know, if it's a new construction, you can even put some plates in between, you know, in between uh-huh. the outer wall and the inner wall where you say, you know what, these three feet, if we hide behind that, we're safe. Right, right. Yeah, I all. think I think that's that's a, a big deal because a lot of people think about you know think about building their entire house. Uh, yeah, bulletproof. bulletproof, whatever. What if you made the but, three feet right below the window sill? You know, mm-hmm. you always see people in a shootout and they're hiding, you know, right there. Well, realistically, five yeah. five six or bigger, it's going right through right the through. freaking wall. Right. They're just going to shoot you. You think you're hiding, you know, behind the window ledge, but Mm -hmm. that doesn't really work out. Right. There's about a half inch of plywood and about a half inch of drywall, and that's about it. Yeah. And, you know, maybe it'll stop one bullet if it catches the two by four or whatever, but eh, realistically, you're going to have a problem. I think we should do a video, do some kind of demonstration on that. Right. See what it takes to go through a a wall. You know, put some vinyl, some plywood, Mm -hmm. and then uh, some sheetrock. Yeah, and no, I, I think that'd you, be a good video. I bet you it goes right through. Um, so after we've got our house as sturdy as we can make it, we oh. got some places to hide. 
One All second right. before we get going, I wanted to touch back on the um, on the fire thing. Okay. Um, we were talking about the shutters. Now, a flashbang, a Molotov cocktail, tear gas, they can go right through the window. Yes. You can just throw that like a baseball and go right through. Now, a Molotov cocktail burning on the outside of your house, outside of your shutters, is a lot better than one burning inside your house, uh, you know, as far as uh, not dying immediately. Yes. And nobody, I mean, I've never caught myself on fire, like my whole body. I mean, parts of my body, yeah. Sure. sure. But I've Who never hasn't caught, had that? But I mean, I feel like being doused in gasoline and motor oil and being on fire at the same time, it's got to suck. It's got to be gotta awful. Suck. Well, I've had the experience of having my legs doused in gasoline and on fire. Oh, and really? That my go? advice to you is um, the stop, drop, and roll thing does not work at all when you're covered in gasoline. <laughs> no, gasoline, it just keeps relighting, doesn't it? It does. It just keeps coming back. And you're yeah. like, what the hell? Turns out the pouring the gas can onto a fire you always think, well, I don't see a flame, so I should right. be okay. It's gonna be good. No, it should flare up. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> don't don't ever put gasoline on any fire, even if it's not burning yet. And don't yeah. pour gasoline on your fire and then try and light it with a match because you're not gonna have any hair left on your on your face and your arms. Exactly. I'm, I mean, I'm saying hypothetically. It's not like I've ever like done in that. a movie or something. You right. Know, right. Somebody might have done that. Right. So I'm just saying, you know, if you like hair on your legs and maybe mm -hmm. not hospital uh, visits. No, I didn't require any hospital visits, but I will say there wasn't any hair on the legs. <laughs> now, I will say uh, fire extinguishers go a long way. Yes, they really they are. You know, out. Yeah. And you get the, you know, get the type C uh, fire extinguisher and you're good. You're covered. They're a little yeah. bit exp they're a little expensive, you know, you're looking at maybe 50, 60 bucks for a good size fire extinguisher, but uh yeah. worth having in your house. I think but at a minimum, Sam's Club has like some crappy little two pack of little ones that at least you could put it on two different corners, you know. Right. Two uh like maybe one on the second floor and one right in the kitchen or something. Mm -hmm. It's better than nothing and if you really are serious about protecting your home against fire, we did a great episode on off-grid firefighting and taking care of yourself when the fire department isn't coming. Mm -hmm. So you might want to check that out. Um, let's uh, move on to uh, improvised weapons. All now, right. This is where that, you know, Kevin from Home Alone, Kevin McAllister. Uh-huh, with the paint cans on the, the rope. The paint can that... swinging. Yeah, yep. and I think he threw some tacks on the ground. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The micro machines. Is that what it was? Yeah. Yep, yep. stepped on the micro machines. Mm. Not good. Um, uh, I would not put my faith in uh, paint cans and micro machines, though. Really? But what about caltrops? About what? Caltrops. What's that? The the little uh, bendy uh, spike things. Like imagine two nails bent in the middle together, welded right. together. Okay. Yep. I, I saw a video. A guy called them caltrops, but I'm pretty sure it's called a caltrop. But mm. uh, I'm sure you guys will correct me if I'm wrong because that's what good friends on the internet always do. Right. Right. Um, there you go. But uh, yeah, you know, or think like spike strips mm -hmm. or something like that, but basically those around your windowsill, mm -hmm. if you really think somebody's going to be breaking in and, you know, we're talking about eminent and, you know, bad things are coming. We're not, right. you know, not just keep them around. You know, but, uh, you remember that movie death wish he had, uh, he knew that the gangs were coming for him, and he he bailed, banged a bunch of nails through uh, two by sixes and laid them underneath all the windows. Yes, exactly. Uh, That's yeah, the kind how, of thing I'm talking. How realistic about. it is that somebody's going to climb through your window? Most people are going to go right for the door because most people are idiots. Yeah, but there's a lot of fun places you can put these. Right. That are practical. Mm -hmm. So think about that. I do know that. Uh, I, I believe though, in The Walking Dead, they just took a bat and wrapped it in barbed wire. Right. That's a fun tool to have. Mm. Now, I would rather have bullets left. <laughs> yeah, bullets would be I, a lot I feel better. Like that's a way better way to go. Uh -huh. But, you know, you got to keep your options open, you know? That's um, right. Nets. Nets. Nets are fun. 
And I, I know they have that uh, shotgun round for uh, shooting down drones. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder how that would work. That would be somebody. fun. Yeah, you know. You know, I feel like if you had somebody coming, and you had a shotgun, you'd rather just use buckshot or yeah, just, slugs. Just buckshot. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's just right yeah, away. Especially that's since option. the net rounds are like five dollars each, and a mm-hmm. slug is like a nickel. Right. Yeah. There's that. Hmm. Um. Now, what do you think about about body armor? Body armor. I'm a fan. I got to say, it's heavier than you expect unless you spend real money. But mm. if you're not willing to spend real money and you catch the good sales, I actually just shared one in the group the other day that uh, it was a buck fifty nine for a plate carrier and plates. And uh, they were level three, which is pretty decent. Um, but it's heavy. But mm-hmm. if you're in your house, you're not out on a hiking trip up the road or something. Right. It's right. not There's bad. A big- there's a big difference between, uh, you know, doing doing 15 miles uh, with wearing body armor, wearing, uh, you know, right. this amount of weight and going running from your, your living room to your bedroom. Right. Or sitting in the guard shack or, you mm-hmm. know, um, you may also want to consider sniper rifle. Mm-hmm. Um, shooting them before they get to your house. Not a bad way to go. Uh huh. Um, I always hear people talking about now. I'm probably going to get in trouble for this right Uh-oh. now. But I always hear people talking about automatic weapons and, you know, this and that. I don't feel like there's ever really a need for automatic weapons in your own house. If you have sustained, <laughs> accurate gunfire, then, you know, a semi-automatic is, is really what you want. You want to actually hit shit. And automatic weapons are notoriously not, not bad at being for that. able to actually hit things. I know, but if you had a lined up army outside, you would yeah. be like, Chuck, I should have had the machine gun. If there if there were like red coats marching down yes. the street in formation, yes. yes, an automatic weapon would be much better. But I you know See? I knew I don't you'd know admit the weapons it are. if I pushed you. Yeah. Um I do have to point out that uh Chris Kyle was uh quoted as saying uh you know, he he several times had, you know, what full auto, you know, with him. Mm-hmm. And uh he said he, he always wanted to use it, but it was never appropriate. And right. in all this guy's killing and war fighting, it somehow never came up as relevant. And actually having to use it, right? Because it's really not practical. Even, you know, you guys hear me talk about the binary triggers mm-hmm. and the fun you can have. It, it's really for fun. They're not a benefit as far as being an effective fighter. Right. Um, spending time and learning how to shoot and aim. And how to line up on the target quickly Mm -hmm. will do much more for you than having full auto. Um, Saving up the uh, the eight grand or ten grand or whatever it's going to cost you to get into the full auto world, Mm -hmm. you'd do a lot better just uh, learning how to shoot. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That that's a thing. All right, we'll give it to that. Uh, The next thing you have to be. And and this is where a lot of people go wrong. And you always see people go wrong in the prepper novels or the prepper movies or really any movies dealing with psychos and crazies and, uh, you know, basically horror movies in general. You have to be as crazy as they are. And I guess the idea is we have a natural inborn desire, drive to not hurt people. Right. You're reluctant to do something brutal or awful or whatever to somebody, even though they're like a heinous killer or whatever. You know, Mm -hmm. somebody comes in, you know, once they get to the point where, you know, they've stabbed your family, then you're like, oh, I can shoot them. And even that sometimes people are horrified to take action. But we let people go much further than we should. And you need to decide now what you're willing to do to protect your family. And having that confidence will make a huge difference in how things play out. And if you're going to survive any kind of an attack on your home. Um, yeah, I just saw a, um, a video, actually, now that you brought it up. I just watched a video earlier today about a, uh, a guy whose uh, son was sexually molested. And... Um, you know, he 
went and, you know, took care of his kid and all that sort of stuff. And then, then waited at the courthouse. And they, as they're taking the guy in, he just walked up and shot him in the head. You know, it's not something most sane people would think about doing no. to somebody, but in certain circumstances, you know, you do what you, you do what you feel is right. That's it. Um, well, I guess some people feel they need justice. Mm -hmm. Another thing in surviving something like that, and, you know, people always see that, that when you have an, a, a dog, dogs, mm -hmm. animals are so great at alerting us to when something's going on or when there's an intruder. Um, you can also teach your dogs to be a little more alert and encourage when they notice things going on and encourage when, you know, hey, there's a noise out there you know, go jump on it, go, you know, Hey, let's go investigate, you know, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So dogs are great. Now I know you always think, well, in those movies, I always see the dog get shot. Well, better the dog getting shot than your kid getting shot. And I know some of you are like, well, I love my dog more than my kids. Well, mm -hmm. whatever, get a dog that you don't like <laughs> and then use that one and then have like one of those little lap dogs for you. Right. Uh, Right, that that no. somehow is always licking its asshole. I can't. <laughs> Those little dogs are always. I don't understand that. I mean, if there was anything in there, they would have got it a long time ago. Yeah, no, it's 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 crazy. Um, so what now, else? A lot oh, of there dogs, was. Yeah. Just real quick, let's run through some some dogs. A lot of dogs are um, big and mean, and they're great. But they're also big and mean to your neighbor's kids and shit, you know? Yeah, it's not as So good. you have to really train your dogs well if you want them to perform the way you want them to. And yes. there are a lot of breeds that are very uh, friendly and gentle, uh, like a lot of the herding dogs, but are very aggressive when, uh, when it comes down to protecting um, their owner or their family. And I have to point out, if you have a dog that's in the backyard just barking 24-7 because you leave them all chained up and don't take care of them, right. that's not going to alert you to anything because yeah, no he's problem. already barking. Right. And and it's just a dickhead thing to do and, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So don't yeah. do that. Don't I'm not your saying your dog like can't that. be out all the time. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But still take care of your dog and give him what he needs to be happy, you know? Mm -hmm. Um. Next thing that in the modern world, now I know you're like, well, in an off-grid situation, this wouldn't work. And if there's an EMP, it wouldn't work. And if whatever, maybe get some solar, maybe uh, protect your stuff, but surveillance cameras and right. trip wires. And you know, I've talked to you guys about trip wires and all kinds of fun ways. We have a video on the YouTube channel, I think. I think I show you how to make them. And it's pretty cool. You guys can figure it out. This is the kind of stuff that's really going to pay off. We uh, Having some kind of an alert that somebody's coming is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even if, you know, you could set up a uh, tripwire that's just going to raise a flag. And if you're just paying attention, you can notice that if you couldn't do anything else. Right. You know? There's always a way, you know, because you could do a ball and a rope and, you know, you could do it. Mm -hmm. But there's a million ways on YouTube that you can set up to figure out things like that. That's, you know, more than we can get into here. But, you know, because we've talked about it on other episodes. But having cameras and surveillance and have them in key spots, have them in entryways, have them. Have things that are going to alert you when they're at the end of the driveway, when they're at the front gate, when they're, you know, close to the door, when they're walking up the hallway outside of your apartment, mm -hmm. when they're, you know, around the back door where you can't see, you know, even, you know, sometimes, you know, we've talked about in the home defense and, and preparing your home about not having places that bad guys can have concealment or cover outside. Right. But maybe you put the cameras where you can cover that blind spot. Mm -hmm. And if you do a decent job of concealing the cameras, maybe they won't run up and rip it down or, you know, cover it with mud or yeah. bring out their little spray paint and spray it on like in the uh, bank robber movies, you know. Right. And they make a lot of trail cams that are that are easily camouflaged. And that you can view on your phone and check right. out, you know, mm -hmm. remotely and that kind of thing. And that, you know. 
it might cost you five, six hundred bucks. You can there's cheaper routes if you know your budget dictates, but you can definitely find a way that you can uh, have cameras that you can monitor. I know I have one like today, believe it or not. Um, I go to work and I got the mail late and I did all this stuff before work. And mind you, I'm leaving at five in the morning and uh, I went out, I got the mail, I'm sorting out stuff. And then I go to head out and uh, I end up running late and I'm distracted. Mm -hmm. So I forget if I lock the door with the deadbolt or not. Mm -hmm. And I have the camera in my living room and I just turn it on where it has the motion sensor Mm -hmm. That's going to uh, alert me if somebody's walking in the living room, you know? Right. So it's always, you know, something that's going to keep an eye. But that's the bottom line. You want to find a way that it's going to keep an eye out for you so that you can, you know, be alerted to what's going on and then you can prepare for it. Mm -hmm. And that's how you survive, you know, something like the purge. That's right. how you survive a, a shit hits the fan scenario where you have to be on guard every day. And, you know, we go into each area in different episodes and, you know, you can dig deeper into ways you can protect your home and take care of things. So, I don't know. That's what I got. Now, I know a lot of the time when somebody comes knocking on your door with a battering ram, mm -hmm. they like to do it in the middle of the night. That's true. So, I think that, uh, I think it's important that you have uh, whatever your weapon of choice is, whether it's a baseball bat or a shotgun or whatever it is near your bed so you can get out of bed and be ready to party you know i don't sleep with any clothes on but i also don't fight with any clothes on so wow. I'm, I'm ready to go that works out perfect then right. yeah mm -hmm. no i mean uh, you don't know what it, you know i'll come running down the hall and you won't know what gun to look at so <laughs> both both that's will just terrify disturbing you. but either way you want to get something that's going to get your attention before it's too late and that's the right. thing. So many of us get caught up and oblivious to what's going on in our little world or we're staring at our phone or we have headphones on and we're unaware of what else is happening around us. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's a great way that you can stay on top of your shooting game and get the supplies you need to make things kick ass. Oh, yeah. And I would say that's by getting a monthly subscription to Tac Pack. All right. Now, Tac Pack will send you tactical gear for the AR-15 enthusiast. And these are cool items that are specifically for the AR-15. So if that's not your world, it's not something you'd want to do. But basically, you sign up for about $49.95 a month, and they send you a box with basically cool shit inside that adds up to usually about 100 bucks in value. And they do that by buying in bulk and, and, you know, sending out the stuff to everybody. But if you're somebody who's into putting together a lot of AR-15s and working on that kind of stuff, then that might be something you're into. So it might be something to check out. Also, if you guys uh, want to check out uh, on iTunes, leave us a review. Let us know what you think of this episode. And if you're enjoying the podcast, we'd really appreciate it. If you don't use iTunes, wherever you're listening to it, that'd be great. So with that, stay safe, and we'll talk to you guys next week. The Survival and Basic Badass Podcast is a proud member of the Self-Defense Radio Network. Mm -hmm.